Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Frank Bassa from Canada Cobalt Works. How are you today, Frank? I'm very good. Thank you very much. Frank, in preparing to talk to you about Canada Cobalt Works, I was so impressed with your, your background. You're, you're a resource industry expert, so let's start with cobalt. The cobalt stocks are currently not performing the way I would think as an investor they should be performing. Can you tell us what's going on with the cobalt industry? Actually, we, we're probably in the same spot like everybody was originally, and what we did was we kind of listened to the market, we listened to the people that would be buying our product, and we did what we call a technical. So we said, look, we'll show the world I can remove the undesirables from our product and also produce the cobalt sulfate that the market wants. So uh, we were actually in China, in Japan. Uh, we were I spent uh, 10 days in Asia about a year and a half ago. And what you're reading now, we already knew about that a year and a half ago. And we just came back from Europe. We spent some time in Germany. So we listened to the end buyers. We're targeting the end buyers. I think drill results are effective, but the reality, what the market wants, what the end buyer wants, is cobalt sulfate, nickel sulfate, manganese sulfate, all these products. And so you have to show them that you can produce this product, you've got to meet their technical grades, technical specs, and you have to be very reasonable that, you know, what you have, you can deliver on. All right, so let's just start for the Investor Intel audience. We are you know, self-directed, accredited investors. Can you tell us what cobalt sulfate is? What's the difference? Well, you see, a lot of the smelters only produce cobalt metal, but the cathode makers, the cathode makers are asking for cobalt sulfate, and it's a special thing that they want. They want a certain grade, and plus that you have to have certain uh, purities or impurities removed in, from, the, from the product. And then they take that product and they blend it with either a nickel sulfate or manganese sulfate or a copper sulfate to make their own specific uh, battery. It's sort of like a recipe, of, you know, they have their own cookbook. So what you have to do is produce these products on spec so they can make their, their, their end product for the cathode makers. So if I hear you correct, the real market for the cobalt sulfate provider is the cathode market? Yes. market? Yeah. Okay, so tell us about the cathode market. See, apparently, you know, everybody's been talking, that's what we thought, you know, oh, battery manufacturer, battery manufacturer, but the reality was, uh, you go to the, to the cathode makers, and they're the ones who produce the product for the battery manufacturing uh, people. So it's, it's kind of a little more sophisticated, and Japan's even far more sophisticated. For example, we met with Nissan, you know, to talk to them, to get a feel for, you know, the, the cobalt market. And the way Nissan works, they have to buy from metal trader. And the metal trader, you know, buys it from somebody, gives it to the cathode maker, and then Nissan has a design battery that somebody else makes for them, and then Nissan gets the battery. So you can't just go to the end, end user, you've got to find out who the, the people you have to address, and this is what we're doing. We're talking to the people that actually use the cobalt sulfate. Okay, so I'm an I'm a, uh, electric car maker, say I'm Tesla, yeah. and I want to you know, respect sustainability and I want to find my battery materials in North America. Yeah. It, when we're talking about the batteries, yeah. uh, how does the cathode work with that? Uh, like I said, I'm going to have you dumb this down for our audience, please. There, there's multiple things to what you just said in, in terms of sustainability and all this. What, what the market wants, and even the Asians, what's interesting, like I can produce I can recycle the batteries and I can produce product, but they want it done a certain way. So the first thing that everybody wants is, number one, conflict-free cobalt. In other words, they don't want anything coming out of the DRC. Now, this is one of the reasons why we changed our name. And the majority of my financing has coming out of the UK. So you'll notice we use Canada. The product comes from Canada, so it's conflict-free. So we call it cobalt. The reality is the castle makers don't just want cobalt, they want nickel, manganese, cobalt, I mean copper, multiple other uh, uh, elements or metals to make their, their cathode. And we call it work. You notice we didn't say resource, we didn't say mining or anything like that. The reason we did that was basically we're targeting a very specific group that really wants our product, who just want product. In other words, they're not interested. Uh, the only thing they want is to make sure it's cathode. I mean, it's, it's what they call conflict-free and they can, that you can meet their specs. So they're looking for somebody as a process produce their product. And that's all we did. And if you look at us, you'll notice we didn't put out a single drill result and our stock went up to 90 cents solely on the fact that we have a process that can, can produce product that the end users want. That's all we did. 
Well, Frank, uh, thank you so much for giving us some education uh, in the general cobalt market. And if I understand you correct, the battery materials that they're actually seeking is they're seeking the cathode that yeah. has the cobalt sulfite in it, is it? Yeah. Is that correct? Cobalt sulfate, but it's not just cobalt sulfate. They're changing the chemistry. And the reason they're changing the chemistry is because they can't get enough of cobalt. So they're adding the nickel, the manganese, the, car, uh, the, the copper to be able to produce a battery that has a significant range. Well, let me ask you one more question before I let you go. There's a lot of uh, companies out there claiming that they're going to create cobalt-free battery batteries. What are your thoughts on this? They can. The only problem with that is, you know, when we talk to people, for example, at Nissan, they said they can't take the cobalt out. Some of it has to stay because it stabilizes the battery. Now, uh, I'm sure somebody will come up with a better design. It's just a matter of time. The only difficulty with that is when, I, again, I, I spoke to people at Nissan, to commercialize a brand new battery or a new type of battery in Japan is 15 to 20 years. And I've talked to other people in Europe as well. Uh, you know, I've been to a lot of these conferences, and it seems to be the same thing. You can't take the cobalt completely out. You know, the battery's not stable. And the other thing is to commercialize a new battery, it's not a simple thing. Well, you heard it here. You can't take the cobalt out. And thank you very much, Frank, for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. A pleasure.